fallen heroes of our nation's finest. To remember is to honor the ultimate sacrifice that millions have paid so that future generations might be free. Remembrance imparts dignity to the sacrifices made and the ones who made them. Remembrance defines purpose for why so many fought and so many died. Remembrance reflects our values from the ideals that guide us to the gratitude that humbles us. Remembrance creates a legacy for the men and women who've died and the inalienable God-given rights their sacrifices preserved. From revolution to preservation, in times of uncertainty and clarity, when our nation calls, the brave responded. The courageous fought. And some gave it all. For our safety. For our rights. For our civilization. For our freedom. This is uh, one of those days, right? There's times when we have a, a holiday and you ask some people why we celebrate Memorial Day and so many people look at this day as the beginning of summer or a day where we all get to go on whatever, have a barbecue or whatever happens and, and sometimes the idea of what this really means goes beyond and, and people forget. And it's, it's a remembrance, it's a memorial for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country our country to remain free, our country to have the, the, the things that we have, to be able to do and go and be United States of America. And so as we think about this sacrifice, God so many times throughout the Bible told us to have a memorial to remember. Remember this. Remember this time, this point when this happened, and then remember this when this happened. And so as we think about those who lost their lives, that's what today is about. It's not about we have a Veterans Day where we remind where we thank our veterans for serving in our country, but this is about those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, who died on the battlefield, and we've had someone in our town go and die in the battlefield. And so as we consider this, I don't think there's hardly, I don't think there's hardly anybody in the United States that may not or may not have been impacted by losing someone in service. And so sometimes we, we've just glance over that. So I guess today, as we continue throughout our service this morning, may you always remember not just the video, but may you always every day thank, thank those who, who died for our country, and then thank those who are still putting their life on the line every day, because I don't know uh, how many people even stop on a regular basis and go, there's men and women in other places around the world putting their lives on the line for us. You get that? They're dying for you. They don't even know you. But they're dying so that you can come to church free. You can worship for free. They're dying so you can walk the streets free. They're dying so you don't have anyone that sits over top of you in a, in a sort of way to tell you what to do. We live in a free country. And freedom, with freedom, is a price. There's always a price to be paid. And in this case, it's the lives of fantastic men and women of this country who sacrificed everything, who left and wives who lost husbands and dads who died on the, country, on the battlefield and it's a big sacrifice. So as we work out throughout the rest of this time, I couldn't think of a better way to honor them. 
I'd love to have all of them, those who were impacted, just kind of think about what it meant to you, how, how you felt. And even, even sitting here, it feels kind of awkward to me because I don't even know if I can impart how honorable and big it is. So may you continue throughout the rest of this day. You go have a barbecue. You go to the Horn Toad Derby as you walk around and you see those men and women who are walking around keeping us safe at the Horn Toad Derby. Many of those people were on the battlefield at one time for us too and lost people that they love, brothers and sisters in battle with them. So may we always thank them too. Uh, I've always heard it that when you go over and fight, you never come back the same. You leave part of yourself back there. So not only do the men and women who die over there uh, give it all, those who have gone and fought and lost friends and families, what they become, they don't come back, they don't come back the same. They come back missing a little piece. So may we always, may we always, always, always thank those people who are willing to put their lives on the line. Amen? Amen. So with that, where are we going to go? What's that? Offering. Offering. I'm just ready to get started. Today's going to be a little different. I'll explain it to you in a minute. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and take the offering up, please. Uh, let's pray for that. Pray for uh, the rest of this morning. And Miss Mary Jones, uh, it, she apparently had to go to the hospital. She was rushed to the hospital the other day or had a heart attack. I think she's back home. She texted me yesterday. I didn't even know. She texted me, I'm in the hospital. I'm like, whoa, what? Because uh, I wasn't on Facebook a whole lot and didn't see it. I guess she put it on Facebook. Uh, but pray for Miss Mary. She's home, I think, now. She told me she was coming home yesterday. Uh, I don't know what all. I don't know any particulars, but I know she's, she's doing a little bit better because she got to come home, right? So, and there's many other. Uh, Don Kerr is, uh, is in the, was in the hospital. Now he's in rehabilitation hospital in Hanford, I think. So be praying for the Kerrs. Uh, and so many others that they represent, right? And be praying for Brent's, Brent Searway and his family. We're in the last days of his life. Uh, and just pray, they've had a long battle with this. Uh, he fought and fought and fought, and it's to the time now where he's, he's almost ready to be with his Lord. So pray for Allison and the kids. Uh, and if you're interested, I believe we're going to have a team of people go down there when, when he, after he passes and go to the service and all that stuff. So that's what we're hoping to do. So uh, if you don't mind, bow your heads with me, please. So, Lord, I just pray on this, this day of remembrance, this day, uh, Memorial Day, that we would uh, always thank those, just remember those who gave their lives to keep us free, to give us freedom, the freedom to worship, the freedom to speak how we want to speak, act for the most part how we want to act. But, Lord, they did it selflessly. No thought about themselves. They did it for honor and to honor this country. So, Lord, as we go throughout our day today and maybe every day, may we always wake up and look around and remember we're where we are because of those men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And just like your son Jesus gave the ultimate sacrifice for us, it costs something. Freedom is not free. So may we always thank you, God, for giving us our freedom in Jesus. And may we always thank uh, those who gave the ultimate sacrifice and the families that were left behind. Lord, may we always pray for them and thank them for, for, for their sacrifice too because they gave up something as well. I pray for the message this morning, God, that you administer through us. May your word come straight through this and may your Holy Spirit fill each and every one of us and share with us what we need to hear from your message today, God. Because of all days, and actually every day I preach, but today, you gave me this. You told me what to do today. You do that all the time, but today's different. So I just pray and thank you for inspiration and love. May we truly honor you with our tithes and offerings that we're about to give. Father, would you just take the, that offering and use it for your glory. And may you provide. You know we have needs. You know that we have a heater and an air conditioner in this place where we sit right now that needs to be replaced. Would you provide those funds, God, please? We trust you in everything we do and say. In Jesus' precious name we pray and we all say. So as we give the offering, it's kind of different. 
As you can see, the praise team is still up here, and I'm standing up here. Uh, I was, uh, I don't know if you guys know, I was on vacation not last week, but the week before. And I was sitting there, I had a lot, I was doing a lot, had a lot of things to take care of. I had a lot of doctor's appointments and uh, had to have a cast put on my wrist and I got released from the doctor, so good and bad things at the same time. But as I was sitting there, I was thinking about a friend of mine who got very, very, about a couple of weeks after I was in my accident, he was in one up in New Hampshire and he nearly lost his life. His name was, was Walter Furtado part of our ministry, Kelly and Mines ministry in the very beginning in, the, in New Hampshire and looking at his, the pictures of him and he's still going through it. He's got infections. They were afraid that he's going to have to pull the, the stuff that they put in because the infection set in his leg and, and I'm just sitting there reflecting on all that, that's going on and I started thinking to myself, how dare I? Look at me. I'm standing here. I, I got, I don't, my foot's normal again. I'm normal, whatever normal means to me. <laughs> I have a red cast that everybody feels when I give them a hug now. Boom, right now. And in a, so I'm sitting there. I was actually, this might sound weird to you, but I was actually in the bathtub. <laughs> and I was reading my Bible. Actually, I was listening to my Bible and listening to Christian music at the same time. Anybody ever do that? Just kind of, I just, I haven't done that in a long time. Not sat in the bathtub, I mean. <laughs> And as I was sitting there, all of a sudden, God started speaking to me. And I realized how much music meant to me. And I realized that every time I was low, every time something happened, God gave me a song, a, a praise song, a worship song. And I thought, you know what? I think Memorial Day, this coming up day, I didn't know how these guys were going to react. I said, we're going inter to intermingle the worship music with the message today. So that's why we're not doing all the worship set. They're going to do the worship set throughout the message. And each point that I have is going to be reinforced by a song. And you can either stand there, and uh, actually I'm going to have the lights turned down a little bit because I want everybody to, when we're singing and when we're talking, except for up here, back there where you are, just a tad. Because I want, what I really desire for me and for you is that we focus on the words and the music and the message. Not anybody else around you, not the person sitting next to you, not the person sitting across from you, whether they've got their hands raised or not, that's not our business, that's not our worry. It's each and every, every individual's person and worry to worship the way you feel God leading you to worship. So as, as we go through this message, as we talk about it, may you focus on what God is saying to you and nobody else. And as the mu there's a there's message in the music, amen? You probably heard that on a radio station. Which one was it, Kelly? I don't remember. Caleb, maybe? And there's message in the music, and every single song, whether you believe it or not, good and bad, has a message. And that's why it's so important that the songs and the things we, we listen to we, make, we, we should be very careful about what comes in because there's a message that we're receiving whether we believe it or not. Uh, Eminem has a message, right? Through his music, whether you like him or not, he's got a message and he's pretty clear about it. He sings it through. Uh, Mercy Me, Bart from Mercy Me has a message. If you have, did, you see his, did you see the movie I Can Only Imagine? Now you can see where his inspiration, good something movie, right? Now you can see his inspiration from the songs. And it's because these guys who write the songs, they're writing about something that has impacted them. And so everything that they sing about and talk about, I guarantee you it's impacted you in some way. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this. And we're going to have these guys, they said, are we going to have to stand up there the whole time? Yes. You're going to have to stand over here the whole time because you're beautiful. Don't you know that? Um, we're going to be losing a a Adrian this week. He's going to camp. So everybody, when you see him, say thanks. Adrian, oh, the 10th. I lied to you. Never mind. <laughs> He's not, but you can still say thanks, Adrian. Woo! He's going to camp. And Lexi's back from college, but she's leaving already, going to camp. And so is Zachary. They're going to work at Christian Camp Sugar Pine this year. Isn't that great? So, uh, so anyway, can, I don't have my clicker, so I'm going to just rely on you. Or should I come back here and get it? Can you bring it to me? Uh, we can throw that up there anyway. Um, there's a lot of things that happen in our lives, a lot of things that go on that we just don't understand. And so I'm sitting here going, just who are we anyway? You ever thought about that? Who are we anyway? I mean, who am I? Who am I that, that God would care about me? Who am I that God would do the things for me? And then it just came to me, uh, Psalm 139.14 says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. A lot of these verses are going to be up there for you, but Psalm is not. So let me turn to my Psalm 139. Because it's important, this is one of those messages that I'm just so excited about, I can hardly contain myself. 
I'm like excited so much that I'm like, woo! You ever get that excited in your life that you just can't sit still? I know you guys are saying that's you, Pastor Bruce, all the time. If you're around me, you know I just can't stop. So Psalm 139, 14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now look at verse 13 above that. Psalm 139, verse 13 says, For you created me, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. What is that telling you? God knew you were your, when you were your mama, inside your mama. So does that mean that that's a life or not? God, God knit you together. God put you there, did he not? Anyway, that's just a different message altogether. Not really. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We are made by the eternal God. The one who created this entire world. He made us. He made you. Exactly who you are and how you are. So don't you dare. Don't you dare get mad at God. And don't you dare say you're worthless. Because every single life has purpose and meaning. And you know, I had to go through that through my own life. I've told you my story about how I was depressed and fought suicide off, and, or depression and had suicidal thoughts. And it was all lies from the enemy because I felt like I was worthless. Have you ever been there? I, I'm serious. It's okay to admit it because in this country, depression is still one of those things looked down upon. And we need to stop that. We need to come behind those people who don't see themselves as valuable and lift them up and say, you have purpose. You are wonderfully, you are fearfully and wonderfully made by the God of all the universe. You are here for a reason. And so many people seek that reason. So many people go, why am I doing what I'm doing? What do you have for me, God? And they don't even, they, some of those people don't even ever open up the Bible or go to church and hear how much God loves them. And see, when God created us, he put a part of us in us that naturally seeks to worship. There's a God-sized hole in us. And, and in the beginning of my life, I tried to fill that with a lot of things. Alcohol was one of them. Another was the fire department. I just, there's an adrenaline thing in there that you just go running into the fire when everybody else is running out. It's just this thing, right? And, and it's, it's, it's incredible. But I realized that I was filling my life with that, that purpose, that hole in, in me with something that, that just wasn't there. I wasn't quite, quite grasping it. And, and God called me back to him. That's kind of small. I tried to fit it all in there. So if you need to open the Bible, if you can't see that, this is the New, New Living Translation, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And the, the very beginning of the Bible, the opening pages of the Bible, you know what Genesis means, right? <clears throat> My voice is kind of straining. I might need some water, Miss Kelly. Can you get some from our office? Or you have water? Woohoo! Uh, in the very beginning, God created us. Yay, thank you. In the very beginning, God created us. Let me take a swig of this so I can talk. There we go. Thank you, Kelly. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Can I get an amen? Amen. God created people. He created everything. Zach and I were having a small little discussion the other day. I don't, we just talked. Uh, I think we were driving to Hanford. And he asked me, he's like, we were talking about the beginning of everything, and he said, do you think that maybe those, the days, the six days, or seven days, but six days God created and the seventh he rested, do you think that those could mean more than just 24-hour periods? Could those be blocks of time? And I said, you know what, God, uh, God gave us his word, and it has a purpose. And so when I told him, I said, if you were to look at it that way, those being spans of time, it completely takes the Bible out of context. Because in the Hebrew, those words do mean 24-hour periods. They don't mean as expanse of time. And so, is it so far-fetched to believe that the God of this universe, the creator, the one who has always been, could speak things into existence? Is that too hard to believe? It's not to me. So, some people want to mesh things together, but 
it also would destroy the whole beginnings of everything because if we had to evolve, you know, through thousands, millions of years or whatever, and two people, what about the two people that God said he created first? What about the divine story? And what about this? Then God said, let us make human beings in our image. Do you know what I mean? We don't look like God, by the way. God doesn't have fingers and toes and hands and head and all those things, although that's how we refer to him. Because in our minds, that's all we can see, right? But we're made like him in that we have a mind, body, soul, and spirit. Soul and spirit. We're spiritual people. We're made to worship. We're made to think bigger and higher and longer about things. We were made to worship him. So it's your breath that gives me life. He gave us life. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a what? Living person. Jeremiah 1.5 says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. That means God set you apart, has a purpose for you. He set something in your heart. You might be saying, what is it? What do you like to do? That's the first place to start. What is something that really just gets you going? Maybe you have a passion for photography. Maybe God said, use that. Maybe you're a creative person with writing and acting skills. God, use that. That's, God wants to use you exactly how he made you perfectly. He appointed you as a prophet to the nation. God had a very plan in the beginning. Genesis 3.15 shows us where Jesus fixed the problem. He said, uh, he's speaking to Satan right here. He said, I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. And he will strike your head and you he will strike his heel. So as we think about these things and we look at these things, we see so many places where God was there for us and he had a plan. So it should make you think how great our God is. So we're going to sing, great are you, Lord. If you don't want to stand, you can sit right where you are. You can stand, but sing with us. Just focus on the words.
one more time, all the earth. I was on singing the whole time. I'm like, no. <laughs> so I love to sing, and I can keep tune, but anyway, you don't need to hear me. Um, so we know that God had a beginning, and because he had a beginning, God will always pursue you, no matter how far you have gone from God. I hear all the time, how can they know Jesus? Look what they're doing. How dare they? You know what? God loves you. And no matter how far you run, God will pursue you. You can never outrun God. God is in every space, every place. No matter where you go, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, He is there. He's there when you say the wrong things. He's there when you say the right things. He's there when you're watching the wrong stuff, when you're watching the right stuff. He's there. And so, there's a couple of parables that kind of remind us of this. In Luke... You can't read that very well, but I highlighted really what I wanted you guys to see the best and the most. In Luke chapter 15, I got the wrong thing up here. Yep, Luke chapter 15. If you want to open your Bibles, if you can read up there, if your eyes are good, read up there. If they're a lot like mine, you're like, what in the world does that say? But I had to fit it all on there. So verse 15, starting in 3, is the parable of... Can you guess it? The lost sheep. And Jesus was speaking to a bunch of people who were religious leaders, Pharisees of the day, you know, and he says to them, he says, now it says the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear them, but the Pharisees muttered, does he know? Does he know who he's talking to? Does he know? And then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the, entire, the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and, and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. Woo! And I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Amen. Amen. He will pursue you no matter how far you run, no matter how far you go. And that's what I was trying to say in the beginning when he said, her seed will crush your head, will bruise your head, will do whatever. He was telling Satan, you've lost, buddy. You've lost. And a woman's going to give birth to the very son, the very person who's going to destroy your works. And is going to take you out because you're a loser. <laughs> Genesis 15, 11 through 32 is the parable of the prodigal son. Who's read that? A couple of you guys. Who's ever known someone who's been a prodigal, who's run away from God? Anybody? Have you ever done it? Yep. Hello? So it's, it continues right in 15. Do you, what do you think Jesus is trying to tell them? You can't outrun God. You can't ruin God's love, and you can't destroy God's love for you. No matter where you are, and no matter who you are, and how you act, God will love you, and he will pursue you. 
So in this verse, in this section, he says, we flip over to there. There was a man who had two sons. And the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property, and not long over that, the younger son left. And I'm going to brucinize it for now because there's a lot there. And he went and partied. Seriously, he took all his money, went to a different country, and just blew it. And have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed how many friends you have when you have money? Right? Hey, let's have a party. I'm, I'm fine at all. Come on over. BYOB or whatever. In my case, it's BYO me. M, bring your own meat because I ain't cooking it for you. You're going to bring it. I'll cook it. You bring it. You have lots of friends when you can give them what they want. But have you ever noticed the minute that money dries up, that well drives up, where do they go? Where are you guys at? That's what happened with this kid. This young man, the younger son, found himself, uh, ended up being a slave to pig farmers. Servant, the Bible says. And so he's serving and he's feeding the pigs and he just desired so badly to eat the pig slop. Who's ever been around pigs? You seen what they eat? I'm surprised we still eat bacon. <laughs> Pretty nasty. And this is what the guy, the prodigal son, the son of this man, this great, great big ruler, wealthy man, that's what he has started. He just desired that he could even fill his, his belly with that, but no one would even give him that. So he said, oh my gracious. He didn't say it like that. I said that. How many of my father's servants eat so much better than me? And here I am sitting in the mud. So he decided he's going to go back and beg his father to make him a servant so he could at least live his life and, and be okay. You guys, does anybody know the end? His father saw him coming. Did his father go, <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! He's going to mess up and come home. I knew it! Nope. He took off and sprinted towards him. Phew. And he threw his arms around him and hugged him and kissed him and said, go get the fattest cow. We're going to celebrate. Whoop, whoop. We're going to have a lot of tri-tip, right? <laughs> and his brother, younger brother, complained. What are you doing? He took your money. He took, your, he took his inheritance and blew it. And he said, can we find my place? Verse 32, my son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours, but we had to celebrate and be glad because you, this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. Woo! Amen. So God will pursue you. He will pursue you just like the, nine, the one sheep out of 99. And we're going to sing reckless love because God will pursue us with a reckless love. You don't have to stand if you don't want to, but you can if you want. Focus on the words. Sing to God. Sing to God. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath,
There is nothing that God won't do to reach us. The one thing he won't do, though, is do it with us. You notice the father didn't go there and do the activities and watch the activities that he did, that his son did. God is still there, but he's not there going, yeah, keep going. It's different. He's calling you. He's patiently waiting for you to say, hey, wait a minute. You get to the lowest, all you can do is look up. Because of that reckless love, it's because of all of that that we can approach the altar now. We can come to the altar and approach God because of that reckless love of God. That pursuit of who we are, of wanting us to be back with Him. And it's because of His death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, that I can come to the altar. And that's found in Luke 19.10. Luke but for time's sake, I'm going to move on to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 and 18. You can see Luke 10 there. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Hebrews 10, 1 through 18 explains the story. And it talks about a high priest who has felt everything we've ever felt. That being Jesus. I don't know if you remember or have read or know anything about what Jesus went through, but in the very beginning, when he started his ministry, the first thing he had to go through was a time of trial and temptation. In the desert, Satan tempted him with everything, and he still said, no way. God says, I shouldn't do that. He didn't say, I say. He submitted himself to God and the Holy Father and said, God says, I can't do that. He tempted him with everything. In Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews is near the back of your Bible. It's after all the writings of Paul, which lead many to believe that Paul may have written this too. But in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 to 18, God talks about the sacrifice once and for all. It says, verse 1 says, the law, which is what the Old Testament, the, the, what the Old Testament God put in place for the Jewish people. The first five books of the uh, Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They all have a place, and they all spell out different things. And everybody goes, that was so heavy. You know why God did those things and why he set the law up? Does anybody know? 
they needed it. They needed a guideline, and they needed to know how they could be right with God, how they could reach to God. But to be honest, it was set up as a sacrificial system that animals were dying on a regular basis because that was a replacement. Like uh, the substitution, so to speak. You had to bring a sin substitution. And so the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. So in other words, we saw this. They had to continually take animals and sacrifice them. And they went, will this ever end? We have to do this every day? It just showed that someday, and it pointed to a future where the final sacrifice, being Jesus, the Messiah, would give his life. Verse 2 says, if I could, we'll say, for this reason it can never be by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. And if I could, would not they have stopped being offered? For the worshipers would have been cleansed once and for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sin, sins. Because it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. It's a reminder of how bad and awful sin is. Verse 4 says, it shows very clearly it cannot remove sin. Then we jump all the way over to the end of it. Verses 5 to 18 explains the rest. It explains that we become holy because Jesus made us holy. Through his death, burial, and resurrection. Through his sacrifice. And it wasn't, and we don't come to God through religious duty. That will never get you closer to God. Walking through these doors in church is not a religious duty. It will not draw you. It will not, it's not works things that will never get you to God. Nothing you do on your own will get you to God. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. We are holy because of Jesus. We can't solve it because of our, we can't solve our own sin problem. And Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father in power. And by his sacrifice, we are made perfect. I was hoping you'd say amen to that. You can clap to that too. Because by your sacrifice, Jesus, we are made perfect. God looks through Jesus and sees you as a perfect person the moment you accept him. It's because of that we can now approach the altar without fear. There was a time when only one person, the high priest, could go to God. Now, that veil is rent in half, torn in, in half, signifying we all have access directly to God through Jesus. Amen? And because of that, we can approach the altar. So we're going to sing, Oh, Come to the Altar. I think that's the name. Yes, it is. Please listen to the words as you sing. You don't have to stand if you can't. I know I would be like, I can't get up and down all the time. Listen to the words. Sing the words in a prayer. And thank you, Jesus.
Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before. because of this and because he died for us and because we belong to him that we can keep on keeping on. Uh, there's days when my feet feel like lead and my heart feels heavy and there's days when I just grieve for those I love and there's days when I just can't go on again. There's days when everything hurts. There's days when I feel like the loss of my mom and dad is just so much I can't handle it. There's days when you know what I'm talking about. And so it's because of him we can keep going on. It's, I think it's interesting that just continues, right, with Hebrews chapter 10. And we can keep, the Bible says, some people call this persevering. I call it tenacity. Kelly's one of the most tenacious people I know, and she continues and continues and continues on. But there's a days that we're just like, I don't know, God. I don't know. But he says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Amen? Amen. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward good love, toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up on meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching, and that day is approaching, y'all. It's getting closer every day. So rather than alienate each other, rather than tear each other down, let's keep on going. Let's keep on keeping on. And when you see a brother or sister down, don't step on them. Pick them up. And so because of that, yeah, you can clap for that. I want, there's a video I want to show you, and then I want to sing the song for the video. For the, because the next song is called Even If. Uh, by the way, Mercy Me, if you don't know me very well, it's one of my favorite artists of all time. Their new album, I've said it a million times, it's just I can't, there's no song on that album, I just can't fall down on my face and worship. But watch this video about, uh, about the inspiration of the song, Even If. like 
What are we doing? This is the this is a song for the album. Even if was going to be our second or third single on this album, because you know you always have a game plan that you think is right. By the time the album was finished, we were like, "What are we doing? This is the, this is a song for the album. This is the, the reason we're in ministry. The reason we do this is to reach people where they are, and this is that song for us on this album. And the whole thing is about, man. We've had bad days. I've had awful days with a child with a chronic illness, and and just realized, man, there are times where I just can't do this anymore. And, and I, I, you know, I want to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that says, you know, I, I know that God will deliver me, but if he doesn't, I'm still not going to bow. I'll still worship him. He's still worthy to be praised. And I want to be that guy. And that's what this song talks about is I know what he's capable of, but if he, even if he doesn't come through, he's still my hope because of what he's already done. Not what these circumstances are doing to me is not going to change what Christ has done for me long before this. If nothing else, he's the only thing that's prepared me for the circumstance. And so I think... That relates to a lot of people, and this is even it. As we think about this whole idea of no matter what happens we're going to pursue we're going to we're still going to continue on and the, the idea of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego being told to worship a golden image and they said we won't we can't God protected them and then James tells us to be to to celebrate I guess so to speak when you go through trials and temptations I don't know about you but I don't like it but James says celebrate so let's sing together in celebration who God is through the song Even If.
is well. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Can you see how the words speak and how music speaks and how it fills every part of who you are and the things that you've ever felt? Uh, seriously, as I was just sitting there, these songs, this, this is exactly how they came up on my playlist, except I, say, I hit shuffle. You know what shuffle is, you know, it goes all through different songs. And these came up just like this. And I thought, what are you trying to say to me, God? And it was almost as though clear as bell, he said, do this. And so I hope you've enjoyed this kind of thing. But we want to end with uh, one final song. Because, and I know we're just a little bit over, but not much. Since God created us, specifically who we are, he, he breathed the breath of life into us. Since he did that, we now know that, we, that he is great, and we know that he'll pursue us to as far as we can go. As far as we think we can go, he'll be there. He never gives up on us because of his reckless love for us. He'll leave the 99, go after the one, right? And it's because of his death, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and we can come to the altar, and we can beg forgiveness, and we can say, thank you, Jesus, because through you I find forgiveness and hope and I'm made perfect through your blood and resurrection. And no matter what happens, even if we don't feel like God is there, even if we should still, and we can still worship him, we can still praise him, even if he doesn't decide to take this away from us. I don't know if you understand or realize, but some of the things we're put through, some of the things we go through, build us to become who we are. I could never understand why people would be depressed and suicidal unless I had gone through it. No one else can. Kelly doesn't get it. She lived with somebody like that, so she gets that end. But I know it's amazing sometimes when I talk to people who feel that way, and I, say, I share some things, and they're like, how do you know that? I was there. So since I can keep going, and since we can keep going, we have the best news ever, right? The best news ever because Jesus is alive and Jesus has saved us. Whoop, whoop, right? And so he has won. First Corinthians tells us when the perishable have been clothed. I'm just going to skip right to 57. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory, the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the death? Where is the sting of death? It is gone, y'all. We miss people when they leave us, but because we know we will see them again, Hopefully, death has been swallowed up in victory. Woo hoo hoo! Right? And I almost thought about doing Victory in Jesus, but I wanted to do this song uh, because Victory in Jesus is one of my favorites. But God said, no, stick with Mercy Me. And sing the song because it came on next. Can you believe that? Even though Victory in Jesus is on my playlist, believe it or not, it is. But we have the best news ever, don't we? So let's sing about the best news ever. And we'll close out after that. Some say don't ask for help 
God helps the one who helps himself. Press on, get it right. Otherwise, get left behind. Some say, just keep in store. Try hard, then try a little more. But hold up, if that were true, explain to me what the cross is for. What if I were the one to tell you that the fight's already been won? Well, I think your day's about to get better. What if I were the one to tell you that the work's already been done? It's not good news, it's the best news ever. It's the best news ever. So won't you come, come all you wish. It's on, I think. Am I on now? It wasn't on before. Isn't that a little click? You can still hear me, right? Yeah. The booming voice. <laughs> so the only way that you can find uh, value, worth, fulfillment, satisfaction, and purpose is through Jesus Christ our Lord. Fulfilled completely in Him. And the day you find it, and if you found it, you know what I'm talking about. The day you find it is the best day ever. The day that everything changes. The day the alcohol, in my case, gets poured down the sink. The day that the cigarette that you don't want anymore, that you're going to fight through for a long time, and you might still be doing that, because I realize that's a fight and a vice. You throw it down. The day the drugs, no matter, Matt, don't, you don't need them anymore. The jitters you get when you try and stop, go away. None of it's easy. And I'm not even pretending to make fun or even say any of that's easy. But I am saying there is victory in Jesus. Amen. That's right. Amen. And because of that, because of that, all you have to do is turn your heart to him. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. Saved. It doesn't say you might be. It doesn't say, Noe, Noray, if you say the right words, doesn't say, Keegan, as long as you look good with that haircut, because you do, man, you're slamming. <laughs> doesn't say if you go to church. Doesn't say if you sing good. Doesn't say anything like that. It says if you confess with your mouth, you have to say it. Confess. Confess what, who you are. You're a sinner, saved by grace. Confess. Believe. Believe it. Believe that Jesus died for you. Because whether people, people want to erase him out of history or not, they can't. He's in the historical books. There was actually a historical person named Jesus. It's hard as people trying to squash that out. 
And there's witnesses, eyewitnesses, in other writings other than the Bible that say that Jesus rose from the dead. I don't know about you, but I've never met anyone else other than Jesus that rose from the dead. And Jesus was God. John tells us that he, in the book of John, the first chapter, says that he is God. It says he was here, he created everything, he was involved in it all, and nothing was done without him. Jesus. So whoever you are, whatever you believe in, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. And that's the best news ever. Because I tell you what, you can walk out this door, and you can fight as hard as you can fight. But without him, without him, you, you, you can't do it. I did it. I tried. I tried as hard as I could. I did all the things I thought I could do. I heard about him. I talked about him. I went to church. I served in the bus ministry. Memorized Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. says, for, grace by, or, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. I memorized that. That's the first verses I ever learned with Awana Kids in a bus ministry in Fairfax, Virginia. It changed my life. But I'm going to tell you, there was a period when I said yes to Jesus, or I thought I did, and I didn't live it. And I struggled, didn't I, Kelly? I couldn't figure it out. You know, because everybody says, Jesus is awesome, right, Jeff? You know? And I went, I don't feel very awesome. But without going into all of it, I finally said, I'll come back to church because Barry White, hey, Barry, you were hearing this. Love you, brother. Good friend of mine and pastor in Virginia kept calling and bothering me, coming by my house, and wouldn't leave me alone. Praise God for those people. You should. And he said, I'll never come back. I'll stop if you just come this coming up Wednesday. And I went, you got a deal, buddy. My life changed forever. I heard the best news ever. I heard the preacher, Jamie Ragel. I literally couldn't wait for them to finish the service. I was like, just shut up, man. Just shut up. I don't even think I waited until he finished. I ran. I literally ran to the front. And people came over and said, you need help? I don't need any help. I know exactly what I need to do. And I prayed and said, Jesus, you the man. You're it. In my own words, and I prayed, and I'm telling you, my life changed. That was the day God said, you belong to me. Everything changed. I went home, like I said, and I poured the alcohol out. I really did, didn't I, Kelly? Barry saw this, by the way. He saw the beer cans on the table. Because he always came by, and I knew he was coming. I just didn't hide it anymore. I got to the point where I'm like, I don't care. Who are you to tell me what to do? <laughs> Seriously, I had that, didn't I have that attitude? so glad that Barry didn't give up because I was not nice. But he was. He was kind. He was gracious. And he was everything a Christian should be. And I'm sorry if you've run into those Christians that aren't kind and nice. I can't change that. I can't, I can't stop that. I can't make people be different. I can't make people not talk and run their mouth. I can't. I'm sorry if it happened here. I'm sorry if it happened somewhere else, but that's not Jesus. Jesus is perfect. You can be too if you just say yes to Jesus. If you've already said yes to Jesus, then you can persevere even if. And you know what I'm talking about. There's those days when you're like, are you really here, God? Because I don't feel you. I don't feel it. But even if I don't feel it, I'm still going to praise you. It's got to be a decision. And it's easy to make when you love him. We're not very lovable sometimes. It's easy to love somebody who's lovable, isn't it? That's why Kelly's so easy to love. But then she's stuck with me, who's not. You know who you are. You know what you've done in your life. You know the mistakes you've made. You know the things you've said. You know the things you've done. Don't hold on to those. Give them up today. Even if you've done it after Jesus, all you gotta do is just get on your knees. Don't get on your knees. Sit right where you are if you want and, and call out and say, I'm sorry. I'm asking you for forgiveness, Jesus. That's in 1 John. Forgive me. And he'll forgive you. And it'll be the best day ever. Amen?
So would you stand with me so I can close this out in prayer? I don't, we don't have a closing song, right? That was it. Okay, go ahead and stand with me because I'm going to close out and maybe Jared can just play a little bit while we, while we pre, uh, pray. I don't know where you are in your life. I, I know that the Spirit of God was just with me. I know it sounds crazy. He speaks to people even in bathtubs. Trust me. He'll speak to you no matter where you are. These songs that I played today are songs that God is... There's so many others. We, we could have been here for three days. And I could have done that because I love it that much. I didn't want to stop now because I love praising my Jesus. Where are you today? What have, what have you done? Have you accepted him? And if you have, is there, do you just need to say, you know what, let's, let's push reset. Let's make today the beginning of a new day. Memorial Day weekend. Derby weekend. If your plans include going to the beer garden today, cancel them. Go to the soda garden instead. Stay out of it. Stay clear-headed. That's what God wants us to do. Stay clear-headed and level-headed. And I say choose Jesus. Because it'll be the best choice you've ever made in your life. And I'm not saying your life's going to be perfect. Because you're still going to go through things. That's why James said, count it all joy, my brethren, when you suffer trials and temptations. Count it all joy, Mary. We've been through it, haven't we? Count it all joy. Because that means Jesus loves you. And the devil doesn't. So as we, sit, as we close out this morning, would you just pray with me? If you've not accepted Jesus, I can lead you in that prayer. But I want to caution you something. Somebody led me to Jesus and said, Hey, pray after me and say these words and you'll be saved. And I went, okay. And I did it. And I'm telling you, it was an introduction, but my life didn't change because I didn't believe it. I prayed some words. And the Spirit of God was clearly working in me because I felt it, but I didn't change yet. A little bit changed. I felt a little guilty about not going to church, but that went, that went away very quickly when I just kept skipping. And then before long, Kelly said we should go to church. I'm like, nope, I'm going to go fishing today or I'm going to go out today. I'm going to do whatever. Sunday is my day to rest, relax, relaxation. That's what I'm going to do. But when God grabbed me, when God said, come to me, and I said, okay, and I did it, oh, the birds sang louder, like Kelly says. The, the, the flowers smelled better. The sun looked brighter. Everything was awesome. And then life came, wore me down a little bit. And Satan really tried hard to take me out. He tried to tell me, tried to convince me that I was worthless and that I needed to stop. I needed to end. And God even stopped the bullet. Didn't let it go. God has a purpose, had a purpose for my life. No idea it would be here with you guys. Never in my life would I consider that, he thought that. Here I am. What do you think is impossible for you? It's not. Nothing's impossible with our God. Nothing. So when you leave these, this place today, as you're praising Him, and I hope you are, will you talk to Him? Before you leave, will you talk to Him? So bow your heads with me in prayer. And so, Lord, we just come to you today thanking you for this great day. So, Lord, you are awesome. And you are the biggest and the best thing in my life. And so, Lord, would you show us, would you show each and every one of us our path in life? Would you show us our passion and our purpose, whatever it is that you gave us, so we can fulfill that? And, Lord, if there's someone in this place who has never truly accepted your son, Jesus, they went through the motions, but they never said, yes. Would you talk to them today, God? Would you lead them to you? If they feel that tug, may they pray a prayer of forgiveness and just say, Dear Jesus, I know who you are, and I know that you died for me and rose from the dead, and I have salvation through you. Thank you, Jesus. I no longer am a sinner. I belong to the one true God. Save me, Jesus. Save me. I turn from my sin and I turn to you and I count on you every day. Come into my life. Make me new. Create in me a new spirit. 
And Lord, I'm praying for those in this room who have maybe already done that. Maybe they did it years ago and they've just kind of moved away a little bit. They don't see it anymore. They don't have that burning passion to tell people about you, God. They don't know why it's gone away. They don't understand. All they can think about is, I don't know, everything else that's in front of them. And they just stopped telling people or they stopped living. Lord, would you speak to their hearts today? Would you convict them of what it is that they need to do and just let them open their hearts to you, God? And Lord, for all of us in this place, would you minister to us? Would you guide us to the place that we need to be? And would you show us what it is you want us to do? Lord, as we head out today, when we run into people that we know or don't know, would you give us words to say? Father, would you help us to live our lives? Because it, without you, without you, it's impossible. So if I'm like the prodigal son, Father, if I am ever like that again, will I always look back and know that you'll come running and wrap your arms around me and kiss me. And I know that heaven will rejoice. Minister to us all, God. Lead us to your throne. And I pray this all in Jesus' precious and holy and healing name I pray and everyone said. We've had a great door. I've had an awesome morning. I hope you did too. I hope you enjoyed the worship. And I hope that you never leave this place the same. I hope wherever you end up today, you see the world differently. So as you leave today, would you be praising Jesus? Have an outstanding day. Jesus loves you and so do I.